Well, Millwood community, good morning. Uh, today is Monday, uh, April 6th. Good to be with you this morning. Uh, yesterday, I, I, I trust that you joined us for worship online as we uh, began uh, Holy Week together. Uh, this is Holy Week. Holy Week is the week between Palm Sunday uh, and Good Friday, and then of course Resurrection Sunday we call Easter. And the week between those two Sundays is one of the strangest and most profound weeks uh, of all. And certainly it makes sense that in the, in the Christian church that we spend uh, that week um, considering the, the fallenness of humanity, the sin that has broken the entire world and each of us, and all that Jesus did in what's traditionally known as the Passion uh, throughout the week and throughout, uh, through, throughout that week as, as Jesus went from the triumphal entry uh, to the cross and ultimately rose from the grave on Easter Sunday. So as we enter into Holy Week, uh, this being uh, Monday of that week, I, I thought what we could do is use a, a devotional uh, that takes a look at the different scenes that happen during Holy Week. There uh, traditionally has been a, a scene from, from one of the Gospels assigned to each day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, uh, all the way through. And so what I thought we could do uh, for our time this week is, is to spend some time looking at some of the accounts uh, of that Holy Week. And so today is Monday, so we imagine ourselves uh, with the disciples, with Jesus. Yesterday being Palm Sunday, we watched Jesus come into Jerusalem, paraded into town on a colt. The palm branches were waving, the people were crying out, Hosanna in the highest, the triumphal entry, Lord save us. And that takes us to Monday. Our account comes from Mark chapter 11, verse 12 through 8. And what I thought we would do this morning is spend just a, just a moment quieting our hearts and our minds, and then I will read this passage for us. There's a short devotional and then I'll uh, lead us in prayer for the day. So, friends, will you join me as we enter into a moment of quiet stillness before God? A reading again from Mark chapter 11. The next day, so Monday of Holy Week, the next day as they, the disciples, were leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry. And seeing in the distance a fig tree in leaf, he went to find out if it had any fruit. When he reached it, he found nothing but leaves because it was not the season for figs. Then Jesus said to the tree, May no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard him say it. Now on reaching Jerusalem, Jesus entered the temple courts, and he began driving out those who were buying and selling there. He turned over the tables of the money changers and the benches of those who were selling doves. And he would not allow anyone to carry merchandise through the temple courts. And as he taught them, he said, Is it not written that my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations? 
but you have made it a den of robbers. The chief priests and the teachers of the law heard this and began looking for a way to kill him, for they feared him because the whole crowd was amazed by his teaching. Having spent the night between, uh, be, between Palm Sunday and the next day in Monday, he paraded into Jerusalem, but it appears that Jesus and his disciples actually left the city again for the evening to go back to the, the small town of Bethany, and he spent the night there. And having spent the night in Bethany, Jesus and his temple, Jesus and his disciples the next day uh, got up and went back into Jerusalem to go to the temple. A little bit of back and forth goes on during this narrative. And on the way, Jesus finds a, a fig tree in leaf, but there was no fruit present. And he curses the tree, which is symbolic of a people who are clearly enjoying nourishment, but are not bearing fruit. Upon entering the temple area, Jesus began driving out the vendors and the others who would make a marketplace of God's house. This was yet another reason for the Pharisees, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law to find a way to kill him. But they feared Jesus because the whole crowd was amazed at his teaching. I'm struck by the fear that is present in the, in, the, in, the, in the beings of the religious leaders. Jesus has a way of putting religiosity to the side when it gets in the way of the purposes of God, and that's what I think we see here. And as I consider that, I, I can't help but wonder how have we allowed our sense of religion, our sense of the, the do's and the don'ts, the rights and the wrongs, the, the, the things that we, the hoops we jump through in our, in our attempt to practice the faith, how have we allowed the, those things to actually get in the way of what God might be trying to do in us? So as we go into our day this morning, I want to invite you into a time of prayer. Please join me. Gracious and loving God, as we enter into this week, this holy week, we pause this Monday morning to acknowledge that you are present with us in it, that you have set before us the entirety of this week, that you have desires and hopes for the people that we would be as we go into this world. Lord, we continue in a, in a time of quarantine. Most of us, our lives have been disrupted in, in, in significant ways, and we want to continue to be looking for you in that disruption. Lord, we know that throughout history, you have made yourself known to your people in places of discomfort, and we pray that that would be true of, of us as well. Lord, help us to be the, the people that you long for us to be. Lord, as we go into the places we go, as we interact with the people with whom we come across, whether it be in person or even in uh, in electron even through electronic means, whether it be on video calls or th over the phone or through email, other ways online, God help us to remember that we are your people, and that we're called to live in ways that are different from the rest of the world. That we're called to care for our community, and to do it in a posture that puts fear aside but enters boldly into places where there is brokenness. Lord, help us to bring your love to this world that is in such desperate need of it. And Lord, this day, may we be people who love and serve the Lord Jesus Christ and who love the people you place in our lives. 
For this we give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, Millwood, have a wonderful day. Thank you for joining this morning, and we'll see you back here again tomorrow. God bless, and we'll see you soon.